Coach Becky from Doc Wayne here with Stephanie Rovetti on episode 13 of our Kids in COVID-19 series. Stephanie is a Team USA rugby player and a member of the squad that qualified for Tokyo 2020, which is now Tokyo 2021. And Stephanie comes to our series via Athletes for Hope, a nonprofit that connects athletes to charities around the world. Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing today? Hi, good. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited and so much to talk about. Um, how's your life been going with all these changes with COVID and then the Olympics changing? Uh, yeah, good. Um, I'm down here in San Diego. Um, training we train out here and so right now we're just kind of in our off season um because we can't train and so um just down here trying to you know make it through and and get ready for the upcoming season so yeah so many people are just trying to make it through as you said in so many different ways but tell us a little bit about yourself your athletic journey you were a track athlete in high school and turned collegiate basketball player, and now you compete for USA Rugby. Such an interesting journey. Yeah, I kind of had an um, interesting journey to my um, where I am now. Um, growing up, I, I played all sports, um, mm -hmm. and then um, as I got into, into high school, I played track and basketball, um, and then um, I was fortunate enough to get a, a scholarship to go play at BYU um, basketball. And um, then I played through college and then um, I went to grad school at Fresno State um, and had a year left to play there. And so I played there and then um, got my degree and then um, ready to kind of move on from sports and go into the, into the, into the real world, quote unquote, and um, got a job coaching basketball down at the University of San Diego. So I came down to San Diego and worked here for two years. And um, my sister kind of introduced me to rugby and she had played. And, and um, so I joined a club down here um, just for fun and, and um, awesome club, awesome club. And uh, ended up going to, to play on the national team. Um, so a bit of an unconventional way to go. And, and I was 26 when I, um, 25, 26 when I joined the team. And so a bit older than I thought my athletic career was over and um, kind of different, different sports and different um, challenges as far as mental um, health. And, um, you know, I grew up when I was playing all these sports, I was, I was told to, you know, not share my feelings and not kind of hide um, things that are, I'm not supposed to feel. And, um, even as I got into college, I, I didn't, it wasn't until I got on the national team that I kind of found that there's um, more power and vulnerability and feelings than, than not. And so, um, but that was kind of my journey here. And, and um, as far as my mental health journey, I think um, it wasn't until I was 26 that I really got a good grasp on, on, on mental health. Mm, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And there's just so many things that I'm hearing from your story. And one of them is just sort of the joy of sport is, that so many people are focused on the performance aspect and maybe um, focusing on one particular sport in their life. But it seems like through your journey on the athletic side, you just carried through and found different things that maybe gave you joy or um, gave you that um, just interest in sport. But on the mental health side, can you say a little bit more about what you discovered on your journey? Yeah, so I think from the time I was maybe, you know, five or six years old, um, when I played sport, if you had, you know, you told don't cry, you know, don't cry, and you want to be seen as tough, and you want to, you know, if you feel a certain way, you know, maybe it's not okay to feel a certain way. And so, um, you know, you want to be tough, and you want to be, you know, the best. And, and so you don't maybe don't talk, maybe don't talk about anything. So I think from the time I was little, I would grew up that way. And I, I avoided all feelings that I don't feel like were, were right. Or, yeah. um, you know, I wasn't supposed to feel, or if I felt sad or bad, it wasn't, it wasn't a strong feeling. And so I didn't want to feel that way. And so I would just avoid it. Um, and that kind of carried on, um, into high school and then, um, into college. And I think I, I was at, when I was at BYU, um, you know, I wasn't in high school, I was kind of, I was 
the best at the sport that I, I was playing. And I got into college in a higher level where I wasn't the best. And, and, you know, it became more of a job and it became more of, um, you know, with a lot of feelings tied to that. And um, my whole, and I, looking back, I regret this so much because I just didn't, didn't, talk about any of that. I just thought I was stronger than that. I was tougher than that. And, you know, I wasn't supposed to feel that. And so, you know, I had all those feelings bottled up inside me. And, and when I graduated, you know, I just thought I'd run away from those feelings and, you know, maybe I'll go somewhere else and play somewhere different. And, um, you know, and so then that's when I went to Fresno state and, um, same thing there where I, you know, I didn't find vulnerability as a strength and I found it as a weakness and that's just the way I was wired and the way, um, you know, the environment was set up for me. And, um, it wasn't until when I came down to play rugby, what interests me so much. And I think what made me stay was, um, I got into this environment where we talk, we're, we're, we're practicing and we stop and we talk about our feelings and we talk about, Oh, what did you see there? Okay. What did you feel there? Okay. Or like, why, you know, why did you do that? Or why did you say that? And, and com- rugby is such a communicative sport where that's so you're on the pitch and you only communicate with each other. And, yeah. and, um, so having those relationships and those, um, conversations are so important to your performance. And so, I mean, the first, first and second training out there, I, you know, we were in the circle and we we're talking about our feelings and I was thinking like, what, what is like, what is this? I, this is nothing very, very foreign to me. And, Mm -hmm. and so I was very, very intrigued. And, um, it was a environment where it was inclusive and it was like welcoming my feelings and they wanted to know my feelings. And, um, so this at 26 was like, you know, I don't, I don't know what this is, but I'm intrigued. And so, um, I played when I went on to the national team, um, we would have these meetings every single week, um, call them brave meetings or culture meetings where, you know, we talk about our feelings and, and, you know, we ask people's opinions and, and I always thought, you know, why, why are we doing this? And why, like, I just didn't understand. And especially at, you know, the highest level of rugby you can be at, you know, why are we talking about why you're sad or why you're angry or why you are nervous or why you're scared? And to me, I looked at all these people of, these professional athletes. And I didn't think they were scared. There's no way they can be scared because, you know, they're, they're them and they're the best. And, um, so I think getting to that point where, um, you know, it's so welcomed and so open. Um, I saw that how much stronger our relationships on the pitch was and how much stronger, our relationships with our coaches were and how much I trusted them and how much of an environment where you're safe and how much that helped our performance and made me closer than any team that I've ever been on. And, um, you know, I was been on this team for, for three months and I felt more accepted and more comfortable than I'd been even in, on teams I'd been on for four or five years. And, and, and I was like, oh, I think, you know, I think I'm onto something. I think there's something here that, that is powerful. And, and, um, we, uh, as a team, we have this, we have a set of values and, um, it's an acronym brave and the V is vulnerability. And, um, that's a very a core value that we hold and we practice daily. And, um, we find is so, so important, especially to performance. And, um, you know, as much as we practice on the pitch training, we practice, our vulnerability on the pitch training. And that's, that's a daily thing. And so um, I think just the mindset, if anything, transitioning from even when I was a little, little kid to then, okay, being a really good athlete in, in high school to then, you know, college. And um, so it's, yeah, definitely when I got here, I was thinking, you know, it's the, something's really, really important here. And I think um, I'm just, I'm just sad. I didn't, realize it sooner. And, and, um, so yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. And, um, I love how you're linking mental health and mental wellness with performance, because I think there is an opportunity to shift the dialogue around mental health across the country, especially in youth sport. Um, 
and make that linkage because oftentimes coaches and athletes, but they're really following their coaches, don't see that connection. And so they often think that mental health is for off the field or it's for only people who are struggling or who have a diagnosis or something like that. But truly it is part of the whole performer and sport for most people is just building life skills and making them a better citizen of the world. But it is a big piece of the performance um, picture of an athlete. And I love this story about how it really made the team better and made you all be able to communicate better because of the openness and inclusion. Um, and we can only imagine what sport would look like in the United States or globally if we were all um, in an atmosphere that you're describing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, you know, I think that it's so important to have that encouragement of vulnerable is power rather than vulnerable. Mm -hmm. is and um, you definitely see it um, directly correlated with performance for, for our team and, and, um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's important, very important. Yeah, so how are you maintaining your physical and mental game as you await uh, Tokyo 2021? Yeah, that was kind of a, a crazy <laughs> and unexpected thing. And um, as I sh I'm sure many people in this country are, are mm -hmm. very much relate to of, you know, uncertainty and, and for us, you know, for me, i had been training for two years, some people longer for mm -hmm. this, you know, this end kind of end goal of the Olympics and being able to represent your country and, and the things you do every day, you kind of have that in the back of your head of why you do things of, you know, I want to go and make my country proud and, and, you know, you play for this. And, and then, so all of a sudden it's just cut off. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty and I can't see my teammates anymore. And, um, there's a lot of lost connection and the loss of purpose. You know, if I'm not, if I'm not training for anything, that's my job. So what, am, like, what am I, what's my purpose? What am I doing? I, you know, I, uh, so that was hard for me at the beginning and I was very angry and insecure of like, can I train by myself for five months? Can I, can I do this? Can I do this for, and I don't even know how long it's going to be. I felt really helpless and, you know, sad and disappointed and unsure and, and alone. And, um, so it was very, very difficult. And I, you know, something I've done is kind of create a, a support system where I know that if I'm in feeling, you know, not, not right, or there's a, there's an issue of, I can have people that I can talk to. And, and, um, one of those people were my teammates. And then it was, so we all connected, um, kind of when all this happened, um, and just kind of shared our feelings and, and, you know, talked about uh, different things that are concerns and, and, um, it was good to know you're not alone. And then, um, I have my family that I talked to and kind of confided in and, and, um, we have a sports psychologist that our team uses that, you know, gave us some strategies for, um, you know, when we're training and the mindset that we, we, we can have. And then, um, I have a therapist outside that gives me kind of, that has nothing to do with sports and no sports background. And which I love because I get so much of that, you know, in my job, yeah. and gives me kind of a uh, big picture overarching um, kind of, and you know my personal life and my rugby life are so intertwined and um, so just having the group of four 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 groups that I confide in and I um, came up with some I guess strategies that worked for me to kind of help me mentally through this and I started journaling a lot and you know I wrote down why you know, why I do things, why do I train, why do I do the things that I do and what makes me, what do I do it for? Um, and then, you know, something I think is that there's opportunities in everything. And so even in the bad things are an opportunity for things. And so what, what are, what opportunities do I have now that things are different? And, um, you know, my mind goes to a lot of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And I think that's it's unproductive for me. Um, so just journaling that out and, um, you know, I started, um, doing more yoga and reading and creating a routine um, the best that I can, but just kind of um, enjoying, you know, what I have in front of me. Um, and so 
it's been good to kind of take a step back and, and, and although it was difficult kind of work on things that maybe I don't have time to, I'm a terrible, terrible, terrible cook. And so I started uh, doing cooking lessons for myself. Yeah. And um, so um, just looking for opportunities, you know, to do things that, you know, things that are going to help you and um, physically kind of took a step back too. And we train 24 seven. So, um, you know, doing giving my body a rest and then just doing things that i enjoy and um i'm very fortunate to be living here in san diego and so i can go surfing and kayaking and and bike riding year round so um just been doing that to kind of um stay active and we have a a bit of a, a training program that we'll follow um as we get kind of back into training but um as far as this just kind of sitting with the uncertainty and saying like it's okay for it to be uncertain and what are opportunities that I can do now. Um, but it was hard to get there. It was really hard to get there. It was a couple of weeks where I was just like, I can't do this. And, you know, I'm going crazy. And, um, but just being able to sit with that, I think, and, and work with that, I think was, was challenging, but it's, um, I think going into this next season, I think I developed a lot of skills that because of this, I think very, very unique experience you can kind of take with you. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, because I think that's helpful for um, people that are in your shoes, which is not a lot of the population looking at Tokyo 2021, but also the youth athletes that perhaps miss their season or Mm -hmm. are feeling the uncertainty of going back into fall athletics of what's it going to look like? Um, is it going to happen? Is that sometimes you just have to sit with things that you can't control and what can you do to build your skills was, which is what you, um, spoke to really well. And as we enter, re-enter sport, are there any things that you can add about how you prepare yourself for the, for pregame or short-term skills that you use, um, outside of the COVID situation that you want to share with us? Um, yes, uh, I think so rugby is a very, very fast game. It's 14 minutes. And so as far as like on pitch things that I think that I use, um, when you're going into a game, you play about six games in two days. Mm -hmm. So when you're going into a game, the games are right after one after another, one after another. And so it's a very, very fast paced. And, um, there's a lot of you get really anxious, you get really nervous. You think, well, what if this goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? You're thinking who's in the crowd. You're thinking, you know, um, what if I do bad? Like, what if, you know, all these things going through your mind and your mind is so busy, so busy, so busy. And, um, you know, you, when you're going out to play a game, you line up in a tunnel and you're right next to the team that you're about to play and you just stand there until they tell you to run on. And then you run to the middle of the field and you got about 20 seconds with your team before you kick off. And so it's fast. And if your mind isn't, right there ready to perform and ready to and focused and, and in the right place, then, you know, you're the game's over and, and you lost. And so um, something that we work on, I think daily, if not multiple times a day is just anchoring our mind and getting into the present moment. And, and, you know, when your mind starts to wander of, you know, I'm, I'm nervous or, you know, I'm feeling this anxiety or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to do bad or um, you know, all this, all these different things, then, um, we just want to be focused on the present moment and focus on what you're doing. And so something that, um, we use is just using one of your senses to really anchor you. And so for, for me, it took me a while to try out different things and, you know, what's going to focus me into the present moment. And, um, for me, it's, I use, I use a couple different things, but one is, um, hearing and so rugby is a very you communicate a lot you talk a lot you're talking to your teammates constantly what are you doing what am I doing what do I need to do um and so I for a game I'll just close my eyes and I'll listen to who's talking and then think who's talking who's talking whose voice is that and that focuses me right in the moment I'm in the moment I'm not thinking about my anxiety I'm not thinking about what if I do bad I'm not thinking what if we lose what if what if this and um or another thing I'll use is I'll touch a teammate. I'll touch one of my teammates and, you know, my hand is on their shoulder or um, I'll get a piece of grass and I'll just drop it and watch it. And that's anchoring me into the present moment. Um, and so doing those things, I think, um, and that's not only in 
rugby. And so there it's like, you have to be focused like that. So, um, but I think in, you know, say in a, an hour training or in my life, um, where I'm start my mind's starting to go, what ifs, you know, what this, 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 I'll, I'll use it to kind of anchor myself into the moment or, you know, I'll go outside and I'll, I'll draw what's outside. And that's gets me into, you know, what's going on right here, right now. And those things kind of, um, aren't as prevalent. And so I think that's something that the major thing that I use, um, on the field. Yeah. I love that strategy. So in our program with our kids, we use, um, skills like that and we call that one show up. Um, so it's the translation of mindfulness. So you're you're talking about mindfulness strategies, but to reduce stigma, um, you know, kids don't want to talk about mindfulness. So we, we call it show up and, um, it's a skill to, look inward and figure out how to use the strategies you're talking about, but it's also a skill to know when you haven't showed up. So to identify when you're not in the moment um, and to figure out what strategy might be useful to you as you're, as you're so eloquently talking about. Um, but Stephanie, um, you hold a bachelor's and a master's in public health. And with this background, just curious what your perspective on mental health for all people, so not just kids, not just adults, not just athletes, but everyone, um, what's your perspective on that? Well, I think like as a, as a country and as a society, we focus so much on physical health and um, especially studying in school and mm-hmm. how like, okay, this physical, you know, everything is all physical, but not realizing that mental health is intertwined. And for me as an athlete, I think I use my body as my tool, as my job. And, and so my physical health is so important. And, you know, my body is, is a machine and my mind is, is the engine. So, you know, if my engine isn't working right, and then I'm not going to get the most out of myself. And for me, that's so, so, so important. And it's, it's forced me to hyper focus on my mental because I want to be so good physically. And that's my, that's my job. And, but I think we, I think in any aspect of any life, it's, it's the same thing of you want to be your best self and um, you know, your body is your machine for your job, for school, for, you know, whatever you want to do and whatever you want to achieve. And, and, you know, if your, if your engine isn't, isn't working right and it's not going to be the best it can be. And so I think both, you know, it, all things it's so 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 intertwined of mental health and physical health and um you know it's so important and not only take care of your engine when it's broken or when you're in a crisis of you know being proactive and you know get your oil changed and which reminds me i need to get my oil changed but (laughs) being so proactive and not just going in a crisis and and um you know having goals and having things that build your confidence and having a healthy balance and and doing things that um into your i think routine to really take care of yourself. And, and, um, you know, that's not, that's not something that I learned till later in my life, which I wish, wish I would have learned a lot sooner, but, um, like how important and how easy it can be to do if you make it a priority. And so, um, I can't talk enough about how important I think, I think that, that it is. Yeah. Uh, so I've been asking you a ton of questions and I let you know when we first, uh, started this session before we went live that you could ask me one. So here it is. Um, what questions are you thinking about around Doc Wien or mental health um, or kids in general? Yeah, I think that, I mean, with how my experience with how I grew up and how I think a lot of our society is with, with um, getting a stigma around mental health and having, um, you know, it be, vulnerability being a bad thing. And I just kind of wondered um, what you see in your experiences and what, what you think um, is the biggest barrier to kind of changing that, yeah. that mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So I think you're hitting on a really big question that not only is about mental health, but public health and our society in general. So I'm not going to claim to have the answers on this, because if I did, then I'd be trying to address um, society and stigma um, across the board. But in terms of what I see from Doc Wayne is that sport can transcend a lot of societal issues. 
across the globe. So not even just in the United States. And so we can truly harness the power of sport to reduce the stigma around mental health challenges. So what we've been successful at, at Doc Wayne in really reaching kids is um, sending clinicians who are dressed as athletic coaches out into the, the fields and the courts um, with the skills to um, to teach them mental health um, techniques. And so that's one way. Um, the other thoughts that I have is that I see lots of athletes who are leading the charge, um, which is wonderful around mental health, but not many are talking specifically about youth mental health, which I think would be really helpful. Um, so we see uh, Kevin Love, for example, is doing tremendous work using his platform around mental health for, for everyone, but we really need a specific message um, to be sent out around youth sports and youth in general saying, we need to increase the services and the access points for kids. Um, so I truly appreciate all of the people who are using their voice around this, but we need to um, bolster the voices around youth um, mental health. And then also around public health messaging. There's so much work being done on changing the norms um, for other public health messages, but we need to make um, mental health a priority for youth on public health messaging so that it's engaging and fun and youth centric. And just one strategy that we've used at Doc Wayne is to utilize characters, um, just like the TV shows that kids uh, watch, but finding some characters that they can really latch onto for mental health and some very catchy phrases and messages for them. Um, but this can't live here just at Doc Wayne. This has to be a uh, strategy that's rolled out across the country and across the globe so that we can increase access and reduce stigma for mental health services for kids. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's something that I, as a, as a kid and realizing now, wish that that were in place for me. And, and so I do wish that, you know, it's a very, very important issue that I think needs to um, a lot of attention. So Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you asking the question and I, um, I see and hear that you care about it as do many athletes and the, um, interest and exposure to kids mental health is certainly growing. Um, but Steph, I, I really appreciate your time. And I think the messages that you're highlight, highlighting in your story are so important, especially the linkage between mental health and performance. Um, and just that mental health is for all people and is really vital to the whole athlete and the whole person. Um, but for those who aren't uh, familiar with our work at Doc Wien, we fuse sport and therapy to heal and strengthen at-risk youth. And uh, during this pandemic, we provide telehealth services to kids and to families. But typically, uh, we're in the schools, community centers, and some residential treatment facilities. And if you need mental health services or resources, uh, feel free to reach out to us at support at docwayne.org. And if you're interested in supporting our work and helping us reach more kids, you can visit us at docwayne.org or text donate to 205-570-7251. And this uh, segment with Steph Rovetti will be posted on our YouTube page. And you can see all the past episodes and the handle for that is docwayne, DTG. And just want to thank Steph one more time for being a great teammate and also Athletes for Hope for sending her our way and hope that you all stay healthy and happy during this very challenging time. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.